So, hello everybody, and welcome to testing microservices with a Citrus Twist, where Citrus is the tool that we want to see in action in the next 30 minutes. A few words to my person. My name is Christoph Deppisch, and I'm working as a software developer in uh, Munich, in Germany. The company that I'm working for is called Console. And at Console, I am yeah, primarily working with Java enterprise applications in the middleware integration field. And during this work, my passion for automated software testing is really strong. And this is what leads us to the test framework Citrus, which is our topic uh, right now. And I have to say, I'm really happy to be here today. So what is Citrus? Citrus is an open source integration test framework which focuses on the messaging interfaces of your software. So you as a developer, you write some software and you have interfaces to other components or other services. You consume services or you provide services for others. So you have interfaces and these interfaces should be tested in an automated way. And this is what Citrus is doing. And for that, Citrus offers ready to use endpoint components um, for the message exchange. So Citrus is able as a client and as a server to send and receive messages to different message transports. Um, as a framework, Citrus also works well with uh, known libraries such as TestNG or JUnit. So a test in Citrus is nothing else but a normal unit test. And on top of that, we have added the capabilities for this uh, sending and receiving on different message transports and uh, what is really important to validate incoming messages. And as we will see later in the examples, uh, Citrus also works together with uh, well-known libraries such as Apache Camel and Spring, Docker and Archillion in order to have the integration test scenario done. So what is integration and why are integration tests important for the project? Um, if we have a look at how we develop software today, then it is very likely for you that you have to share some data with others. And commonly or usually you do this by providing some kind of service. So a client can call your service and can retrieve some data. And on the other side, you can also consume a foreign service. So you have to retrieve some data from some other software component. And in our days, this is done over remote interfaces. So we have HTTP REST interfaces or JMS interfaces, some file-based interfaces, what, what not. And these um, interfaces should be tested in an integration test where two services integrate with each other. So at some point, Every project needs integration tests. So this is uh, the common scenario. We have two services, and these services are connected over some kind of interface. This can be, as I already mentioned, some uh, REST interface or JMS interface, a file-based interface, or SOAP. Yeah, SOAP is not dead yet. This is commonly used interface uh, out there. And you as a developer, you have simply the problem that in a testing environment or on your local machine, you don't have the service partner. So you want to call the other service, and in a testing environment, this is simply not available. So you have to think of uh, writing some mock or some simulator for that, if you want to really call the interface. And this is a painful thing to do, because you have to rewrite and you have to re-implement all the logics again for simulating an HTTP server, for instance. And this is where Citrus comes in. So Citrus is able to provide you a service partner in your test case on your local machine or in the testing environment in order to receive your service calls and to give back some responses. Or on the other side, Citrus is able to call you as a client and get back some response from your software and uh, then validate the content. So this is the basic idea. And then there's microservices. And when we think of microservices, the picture gets even more complicated because we don't have uh, one service to talking uh, another service exchanging data. Uh, when we have microservices, we split or divide our applications into smaller pieces. We want to have smaller pieces of software, independent services. We want to have smaller deployments, faster deployments. And the picture looks a little bit like this. 
So you have several services that all interact with each other and all communicate with each other, commonly over some kind of remote interfaces, meaning REST or JMS. And some of these services might be replicated. Some of these services might be in a load balanced setup or in a fault tolerance setup, whatever. So the picture is really getting more complicated in terms of messaging and in terms of having interfaces that have to work and interact together to have the whole complete picture. And when you want to do this, continuous delivery, or even when you want to get close to this, you need to do one very critical and very important thing, and this is automation. You have to do automation wherever possible. You have to do an automated configuration, automated infrastructure setup, automated deployments, and of course, you have to do automated testing. And in the unit testing, we have good automation, but when it comes to acceptance tests or integration tests, where we want to really send some messages over the wire, having real HTTP connections, real JMS connections and whatever, uh, this is a hard thing to do until now, because you're sitting in the right room, you know uh, about Citrus in a few minutes. So this is a simple Citrus test case. As I already mentioned, uh, this is a normal unit test. So here I'm using test and G. You can do the same with uh, JUnit. And we have this test annotation at the class level, normal unit test. And we have a method which is annotated with a Citrus test annotation telling Citrus framework that this is a test case um, in order to handle all different methods in the, in the same class. And then we extend some test designer, and this is simply because we want to use some Java DSL methods or some fluent API. And uh, as in this example, we are using the echo statement, so the echo method coming from this test designer in order to add a test action to the Citrus test, saying, OK, print this line to the console. It's a very simple test action, but you should get the idea that we have a normal unit test. And uh, with adding this uh, Java DSL method calls, we are able to construct a testing logic. So what are these test actions that I um, have mentioned? The test actions are um, actions that you can combine in a fluent API mode. And the two most important ones are the send and the receive operations, because we want to do integration tests for message exchange. So we have to do sending and receiving some messages. But you can do a lot of other things also with the Fluent API. You can wait until something is happening, or you can do something in conditional or repeat on error. Um, this is not uh, the complete overview. You can do a lot of other things. But let's concentrate on the send and the receive operation because um, this is the most important thing. So how can we use this in a test? You see, we have some endpoint that is auto-wired. This is because uh, Citrus is using the Spring framework as um, yeah, central configuration. So you have some endpoints configured in your Spring application context, and you can auto-wire it into your test. We can have a look at this in a few slides. But what is uh, important is in a send operation, we can reference this endpoint, and we can say, Citrus, please send out the message using this endpoint implementation, and this goes then to JMS or file or mail or whatever. And we simply say, uh, I need a payload, and uh, I need something uh, for the message content. Let's have a closer look at this, what the payload means. So we can have inline payloads for XML data or JSON data, plain text, uh, CSV, whatever you like. Here in this example, this is a simple XML payload. And what is very important, you can have variables. So you can say, um, I have test variables at the very beginning. Here is it an order ID with a random number. And we can reference this order ID several times in our test case in payloads and in header information. So this is a, a good abstraction. And then Citrus sends out the message. And on the receive side, Citrus has a very important thing to do. This is validation, because we want to write a test and we want to make sure that things are working as expected. So we need to do some assertions. And here in this receive operation, and the developer can say, this is my expected payload, and this is my expected header data. 
and then Citrus will do a very powerful comparison of what is really coming in and what was expected. And Citrus is offering a really powerful uh, validation mechanism for XML or for JSON. You can use XPath statements and uh, JSON path, whatever. You can use the, the ignore statements, which is good for yeah, things that you simply cannot expect, like this timestamp, which is a millisecond, so you cannot really expect the milliseconds. So you ignore it inside of the payload. And you can have a lot of other features like functions or validation matches. I cannot show you everything today because we only have um, like half an hour. But you should get the idea how to construct uh, the payloads. So what are these endpoints? I already talked about that. And these endpoints are um, implementations in Citrus that are able to send and receive messages to a certain tr transport. So we have HTTP client components and we have HTTP server components. We have JMS, we have uh, like a mail, so you can start up a mail server within Citrus and you can receive some mails and the mails are then forwarded to the uh, test case and the test case can have a receive operation and define some expected uh, payload there. And what is also very important is the camel integration because with the camel integration you can use the camel components and as you might know, Camel has a huge support and a huge amount of components for connecting to different message transports and for different message data formats. So you can use all the Camel components in your Citrus test case to send out messages and to receive messages. This is very important. And there are a bunch of uh, other things, but uh, we, we should move on. So, in the Spring configuration, you simply configure or add these components. And Citrus provides um, XML components for that. As you can see in this example, we're using a JMS endpoint. You give it a destination name, which is a topic or a queue name. And we need some connection factory as a Spring Bean in the configuration or in the application context. And then Citrus is able to connect to this uh, JMS and to send and receive JMS. The same with uh, HTTP, for example. So we have this client component that is able to call uh, a service on this request URL. And when the response is coming back, we can have the receive and can say, OK, I expect that this and that is uh, coming. And also the server component with these uh, three lines, you can start up a complete server component, which is an HTTP server listening on port 8080. And when requests are coming in, again, the test case can have a receive and can say respond and uh, yeah, define the HTTP status code and also payloads and whatnot. So a lot of information given right now. Let's have an example where we test an application. So maybe that in your mind things get set up and you, you can understand how the components are working together. So this is my example that I want to test. It's called cookie factory example because I like to eat cookies very much. Um, so with, in this example, this is uh, several services. It is sh should be in a microservices environment. We will see this uh, later on. So we get different orders of different cookie flavors into the web application. And the first thing that is done is a content-based routing. So the web application will look at the order type and route these to different workers. So we have uh, several workers running, and each worker is uh, for a, on a specific order type. And when the worker has processed the order, then a central reporting server is uh, invoked, and the worker will tell the success to a reporting server. And then the reporting server can tell us what we have produced so far and give us an overview. So this is the example that we want to, to test. In a Docker infrastructure, this looks like follows. So we have the web application, which is running inside of a Docker container in a Tomcat application server. Then the, we have an active MQ broker, a JMS message broker, which is also running in a Docker container. And connected to that, we have three worker instances. Um, running as Java standalone um, applications in Docker containers. And last but not least, we have the reporting server, which is also a, a web application running inside a Tomcat in a Docker container. So we have six Docker containers, and all these Docker containers and services should work together 
and they have to work together to get the orders processed. So this is what, what microservices uh, brings in from messaging. So only if all the services are working together and the interfaces, then we can process the order. In a Citrus test scenario, you simply would send in some orders to the web application, let the orders go through and process them, and on the other side, you can receive the reporting, so making sure that the reporting has received a successful order. This is a very simple and uh, completes uh, or tests the complete picture of our environment. And we will have a look at this in a, in a, in a demo. So, can you see that? Um, I have Docker on my uh, machine, and as you can see, we have no Docker containers running. And uh, I can start the whole Docker environment for this example with a, a Maven Docker start. Oh, Maven. No. And um, what I'm using here is a Docker Maven plugin. Um, written by Roland Hus, and this is really great for me as a developer to have several Docker containers configured in my Maven POM, and all these containers then can be started by this uh, uh, Docker uh, start um, command. And on the, in the, on the left-hand side, in, in green, you see that different containers are right now starting. This is the reporting server. Soon there will be the web application starting, and I can really start my complete infrastructure with this uh, Maven command, and so I can test and can execute some, some Citrus tests against that. So this will um, be shortly finished. Right now this is the, the web server starting. And always fingers crossing that everything is working. Now the, the first worker is starkly starting. This is for the chocolate cookies. And um, this is, uh, right now I'm starting this manually. Yeah? Um, but you can, as this is a Maven plugin, you can also link this startup to a lifecycle phase. Meaning you can have pre-integration tests, you can start up all your Docker containers, execute all integration tests with Maven, and then stop all co Docker containers. So then you would have a, a real complete automated um, build. Right now I have uh, st started them manually, so let's have a look at Docker PS. And uh, hopefully you can see that we have some Docker containers on this uh, machine running. We have Active MQ Broker, a reporting server, some uh, web server, and three workers. So let's give it a manual test. On the left-hand side, you see uh, the bakery application where I can place some orders. So let's place some orders for different kinds and different amount amounts of cookies. And on the right-hand side, this is a reporting uh, overview. So if I click the reload and everything is working, then I should uh, see that the reporting has received the processed orders. And this is what I did manually right now. I tested that my environment is set up and that all the interfaces in this complete picture are working. Otherwise, I wouldn't have received the reporting. And let's test this uh, in an automated way running Maven integration tests. And now um, some Citrus test cases get executed that I have prepared, and these will do the, the exactly the same. They will place some orders of different kind, and on the other side, Citrus will make sure that the reporting service or the reporting has uh, received this. So this is running uh, through, and if I click uh, the reload button again, then we should see, okay, there are some uh, orders. And what is a really important thing is that I can just retest. Because tests should always be repeatable without having to restart any container or web application or whatever. So I can simply retest and the test cases, the Citrus test cases are running again. And we can see, uh, see uh, in the reporting there are some more orders. And these are successful. Here is the overview of Citrus. I have written some test cases. So let's have a look at this in um, IntelliJ. And uh, these are my uh, okay. 
These are my uh, four modules. I have the worker, the web application, and the reporting. And in this acceptance uh, module, I have the uh, acceptance tests, which are written in Citrus. And as you can see, we have some to-dos here, and let's fix them. There's a test case which is not completed yet. And for that, I have to show you uh, the reporting service. We are at the right uh, line code here. Um, if it, it says if the get cookie order count is greater than 1,000, then we should inform our stakeholders. And we inform the stakeholders by sending out an email to the stakeholders, and we say, congratulations, we have produced 1,000 plus cookies, and we are rich. And now I want to test this in, in my Citrus test, so I have prepared uh, a Citrus test, and here I send in some order over some JMS endpoint, and the amount of cookies I'm uh, ordering is 1,001, so it should trigger this email. And here at this to-do, we should be able to receive the, the, the email. So let's uh, quickly go to the configuration. This is the Spring configuration. Um, I already have added the Citrus mail context, so then the Citrus components for the mail module are available. And I can say Citrus mail server, give it a name, give it a port. Usually the port comes from some property file. So let's use a um, property expression for the port and say auto start is true. And that's it. We can use uh, the mail server component right now. Let's add it to our test case. Let's just copy and paste. And use the mail server, which is of type mail server. And uh, now we can use it in the receive. So here, let's add a receive using the mail server. And as payload, we should add the expected uh, m yeah, mail content. And I use a class path resource that I have prepared. It's a mail.xml. Can have a look at this. And we should send a response stating that uh, everything is OK and the mail is uh, accepted. So we also send a response here with class path resource. Oops. Templates mail response. So let's have a look at this. This is an XML structure, so Citrus will automatically marshal the incoming email to an XML structure so that we can reuse the powerful XML validation in Citrus. And then Citrus will compare the incoming email with this expected email, and we have a subject here with, uh, which says congratulations, and uh, we have produced 1,000 plus cookies, and so on. And uh, the response, so we tell the Citrus mail server, you should respond with a 250 OK status code, which is a mail status code, telling the mail client that everything is OK. At this point, we can also uh, yeah, have an error code or simulate something that is wrong with the, with the mail. But let's uh, keep it um, like this. And the test should be completed, and we can start it. So let's enable it. and cross the fingers that I haven't messed up. In the background, my Docker containers are uh, still running. Yeah, and uh, we have a green test. Let's have a look um, here. It's saying success. And let me quickly find the validation. Here it is. So this is the validation. We have a received message, which is the XML payload, and we have a control message. And now Citrus is starting to go element through element. Uh, namespaces are supported, and all this stuff with ignoring and XPath uh, can be, can be uh, included in here. So with every receive, we make sure that everything is as expected. So if I go in here and say greetings, we should have a failing test if I re-execute this. Yep. 
Yep. Test is read, and we should see some error message here and validation exception where we say uh, the element subject is not as expected. We expected greetings, and it was congratulations. Good. So let's go back to the presentation. These are the tools that I have used for this quick demo. As I already mentioned, the, the Maven plugin, which is really, uh, I can really recommend this if you're using Maven. And this really brings the, the, the Docker um, stuff to the Maven build, which is what we want to use or what we uh, are um, likely having to use. And the Apache Camel uh, stuff, I use this for the content-based routing or the REST interfaces. And you can see the whole demo code uh, on GitHub. Just uh, have a look at that. And uh, you will see there some details for how the Docker containers are configured in the POM and so on. And if you have questions, please go there and put some issues at the uh, Docker account um, so we can just discuss and you can uh, answer, uh, I can answer your questions. Okay, so we have tested this picture. Every Docker container was started and we just tested on the boundaries. This is a good idea, but it is not enough in order to have the whole scenario tested. So you could also think of other scenarios where you just start the web application and Citrus is sending in some orders and Citrus is simulating the workers. So on both sides, then making sure that the interfaces are as expected. And in another scenario, you could uh, start in and send in some orders, and the workers are started, and on the reporting server side, Citrus is simulating the reporting server and making sure that the reporting um, calls are correctly. And last not least, you could only start the reporting server, and then Citrus is simulating the workers sending in different reports, and uh, on the other side, Citrus is making sure that the reporting server is um, as expected. And with all these tests, we are sending real messages over real JMS, real HTTP, and so on. So this is the idea, yeah, to have testing on multiple levels in order to have an automated test, and when we want to do a release, then we can say, let the Citrus test run, and uh, everything should be green. So what else in the framework? Um, this is something for you to explore on your own. Um, we have Docker integration, uh, which is uh, an ex extension where you can have inside of your test case, you can start and stop Docker containers. So if we, uh, in the example, we could send in some orders, and while in sending in some orders, we could just kill the active MQ broker with a Docker container. So then a failover scenario would uh, be tested, or we could just kill some workers, or we can add some workers and so on, and see what effects do we have, and um, see what we can do with that. We, can, we, we also have an Aquilion extension, so if you have an Aquilion test case, testing your JEE application, um, with this extension you can use the Citrus framework with the Java DSL, Fluent API, and all the components that we have seen, the endpoints, inside of your Aquilion test. And we have a camel integration, so there you can start and stop camel routes, you can inspect your camel routes, and you can have access to the JMX um, exported uh, operations of the, of the routes and so on. So this is something that for you to, to explore at home, and um, I'm really happy to, to have your feedback and to, to, to get uh, what your thoughts are. This is uh, the information given. Um, so all this stuff that I um, have shown is in the uh, reference guide, and we should um, provide some blogs for new releases and so on. So um, I'm happy to receive um, your, your thoughts on that. So we have one minute and 30 left for questions. Are there any questions? Can we use outside Pardon? Can be, the question is, can it be used outside of Spring? Um, I would say no, because it's really um, heavily using the Spring framework for also internally to have things auto-wired, so you have this Spring context that, I've, uh, that we have seen, but Citrus also works with internal components that are started and uh, then added to the application context in order to have auto-wired it into several things, so this is uh, not uh, usable without uh, having Spring. But uh, it's, it's a uh, test dependency, you, sh you shouldn't 
didn't have this in your productive code, so you have a, a separate module for that. It's just the integration tests. This is a Spring uh, um, yeah, component or a Spring uh, application. See it as a Spring application, but it doesn't uh, really uh, have to use uh, your, your production code as Spring. So it's you, you reusable, reusable with all the others. One, one question, maybe? Any questions? Pardon, uh, one after another in the front row. Uh, can it be used for a consumer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you can you repeat? Can it be used for consumer-driven testing? Consumer-driven testing. So you have a consumer that is waiting for a message, and then the the test is started. Is that what you what you mean? I mean, when um, the two services are implemented by different teams, yeah. it would be nice that the output of the tests of one service is used as, as input of the test of the other service. Ah, so you have uh, separate teams working on separate uh, services, and you want to make sure that these are in, in, in sync. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you should have uh, some kind of interface contract with that team, uh, and you should work on that. So it is, it is not uh, able to, to use, uh, of course you can share your test cases, but on, if you have uh, the services on the one side, you are client, and on the other side, you are server. So it is also, it is, um, every time it is the different direction. So you, you can reuse the test in both teams um, to share some data for the customer and so on. Um, but I think you should rely on the interfaces then and uh, be testing the interfaces from different sides then. Okay. But it's, it is possible. Maybe again, your t test? That was, quite remarkable. That was about my question. This was your question, okay. <laughs> so my time's up. I am happy to receive any questions. I'm around here um, and on the conference. Thank you very much for being my audience and uh, have a nice uh, day. Thank you. Thank you.